What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Black Sheep Family TV. My name is Akali. If you're new here, if you're new here, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, be down with the gang, 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 gang. So, I'm a little bit better. I know y'all know that, like, I had, um, uh, or y'all yeah, might know or might not know. I don't know when the video is going up. Y'all should know, though. But I have been feeling under the weather. I'm still kind of congested, so I still probably sound kind of different um but yeah i want to do a video a sit down talk video about julian autism and like how he even got diagnosed with autism and stuff like that um i had a person ask me about it and i kind of answered it in the car because i did a car vlog on it but i was driving i was distracted it really wasn't gonna be no help so i was like i'm gonna go ahead and do a sit down video jay's supposed to do this video with me that's why i've been like doing it waiting so long to do it but right now the boys are at home but they quiet they you know they watching tv they letting me live my best life right now so once i say that i get hated on but yeah they already had their snack they've been changed from daycare and all that stuff so they should be straight so i'm gonna try to go ahead and film this video yeah All right, so to just go ahead and jump right on into it. Um, first daycare that Julian went to, the therapists, to me, were not all that great. But at the same time, I didn't know like, that I have a rapport with them or nothing like that. So, it just... Julian went to that daycare a few months. I think at least six, maybe. And... The transportation issue had got so, so bad. Like, they would come get him at 5 in the morning, at 5, 6 in the morning, and he wouldn't get back to 6, 7 at night. So, I really didn't get the time, get any time to spend with my baby. The lady up there, she was like, hey, it's a daycare close to where you're at. Uh, why don't you try them? I called them. I just, y'all, I stopped to make sure that they were good. He got his cup. He got changed, all this stuff. Maybe I could film this now. I don't know. Julian pretty much drunk all of Jackson drink, and y'all know Julian know how to say drink and eat. He knows when he wants something to drink and when he wants something to eat. He's he might have autism, but he's not just like that bad. Um, where was I at y'all? So, we transferred, went to a different daycare. Speech therapist, great. From start to finish, speech therapist was bomb. She the one that noticed everything that was going on with Julian. And it was like, hey, I think that he might have autism. Like, because we have tried everything. I have tried everything far as with speech or what a speech therapist, a regular speech therapist would, you know, know to do. And she was like, I think she's been a speech therapist either 10 or 15 years. I don't really recall but she's been doing it a while so she was like you know some people when she told us in a, a conference because it was like after six months she was like some people you know they don't they they kind of be mad that their kid could have autism and to me i'm not going to be mad about something that my kid could have i want to figure out how to help my child so my child can potentially grow out of it get better to the point where people don't even know that he have it stuff like that so i'm not gonna get mad i'm gonna try to fix it it's, it's so to say uh, we got the, we then went to, um, Children's Hospital, the Cobalt Center. The Cobalt Center, this video will only, it will help other people, but, like, the steps will probably only help somebody in Arkansas, just because I don't know how to do it in Arkansas. We went to the Cobalt Center. The Cobalt Center, they don't diagnose your kid. They basically just tell you, like, it's kind of like a screening they do to see if your child even will qualify for or could have autism they did that he stayed he went they thought he was high on that screen as a matter of fact he was high for the alert to have autism so then we got an appointment with the ddc the ddc is a dentist developmental center out here in little rock arkansas 
they are the ones that diagnosed them. It was a speech pathologist, logicist, or logic. I could be saying wrong, y'all. Speech uh, person, therapist. I think they're kind of the same thing. Uh, I think one just specialized in kids with autism. It was a mental health person, and it was a doctor. Three different people that like diagnosed them. The speech pathologist. When I don't think about it, I can say the fucking word, but. The speech person, uh, they took them back, did whatever little assessments and stuff like that for him, well, with him, and then so did the mental health person. She did that as well. So he seen two people in that one visit or whatever, it's maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, real friendly. Um, and with the visit, they tell you they did everything together, like tallied up the scores to see what he where he would fall, if he qualified, and where he would fall. I don't want to say qualified, but if he had autism and if so, where he fell on the spectrum or whatever. And I will say that they when before the appointment came out, we had to fill out the packet. And I guess some parents don't fill out packets. I'm gonna tell you everything that my child is and is not doing. Like it's it's just it's kind of like a no brainer to me. Um, and I had to fill out the same packet. Well, a, a packet, a couple of packets, come to think of it, similar at Children's Hospital, and uh, they were all different. But like when you fill out those packets, I want y'all to know not to get discouraged because that could just remind you of stuff that you might need to go ahead and work on with your kid. But when I seen how much stuff that kids his age is doing and what he's not doing. It was like, dude, we're just filling out those packages. Like, when I was talking to Jay, he was like, dude, I kind of knew that he would be on the spectrum just by looking at the packets and what he is and isn't doing. So, fast forward, DDC, we got the uh, diagnosis or whatever. Um, no help. Like, nothing. We know about the AVA program. Or I feel that that packet over 10 times uh they keep calling julian cameron like they 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 got my name right but they don't got the kids name right or his date of birth or any of that right it's like the whole i don't know how they keep crisscrossing it but i digress so we were trying to get him an ava going to the doctor going to the doctor going to the doctor she's trying to put him in an ava program so what with, with the doctor she finally called it was like hey since they give it up and run around call them and see what's going on basically ddc they had down your child but they won't set up no ava there right like right then and there and it's like you have to come back for a follow-up for that and she asked i want a six month follow-up or a year follow-up i said the six month not knowing that i really was gonna need a six month follow-up because there's you have a diagnosis, but there's like no help. And in the state of Arkansas, it's only one place that diagnoses kids with ADHD, uh, autism, and something else. They even like test, like quali like test for it to see if you even have it. Like it's only one state in Arkansas that does that for autism. I know. So yeah, we got the diagnosis or whatever, and. It's like we've been trying to figure out like sensory stuff and stuff that would help him with his autism. I see, because with me, I want to help him with his autism. I don't want to handicap him. I don't want to cripple him. And if I didn't say it, I'm under the weather. If you got this far in the video, because I don't know if I said it or not, subscribe, share it out, share it out to friends, and stuff like that. Also, a lot of people be like, Thank you for opening up or whatever about Julian and his autism. Like, there's no problem for me. Just because when I go on YouTube to see what sensory stuff, sensory rooms, what kids Julian age does with autism, like, no one really wants to open up about it. They, if they do say that their kid got autism, they don't tell the process or what this child is doing different from other kids or what this child is doing at all, period. So I can know what to look for. And I, when I do see people doing it, they're not people that look like me. So I want people to be able to find somebody that they feel like they can relate to. Not saying that there's nobody out there that's, you know, my race or, you know, even a minority that's doing these type of videos. I'm not saying that it's not that, but I haven't come across, uh, across any of them. Like, none of them. The closest to minority I think I have came across was a white lady that has five kids and one of them is Chinese and I don't think Chinese is a minority. You know what I'm saying? So 
I could be wrong though, but I think only minorities are like brown skin, like Indians, black people, uh, Spanish people, and stuff like that. Like, I seriously doubt that they're a minority. Could be wrong, could be just ignorant, but that little, that child has it, and she adopted that child. You, you get what I'm saying? So, I have wanted to go ahead and open up my platform. It's going to be educational to me. It's educational to other people. As I'm learning, I want to do these videos. So, when I'm talking about autism, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the AV. AV, AVA. Um, what that is, it's a program that helps. It's kind of like, you know, how somebody have living assistance or need living assistance, and um, they... Um, have somebody come out to the home, like you know how elder people like Carolink, uh, Bright Star, it's to name a few places I can think of. They come in and they help the older people, you know, they clean up, you know, they make sure they take their medicine, they may make them a meal or something and stuff like that. That's kind of what that person does for Julian in the family. Now, what the biggest thing that I know that this person is going to help with is trying to get Julian potty trained because we. He, he can barely speak, so getting him to go to the pot is going to be a hassle and it could take a while. But y'all know we here for the ride. But the AVA, they come anywhere between 20 to 40 hours a week, like, in your home. And, like, the stuff that I don't know about Julian, like, I know that people always say, well, with autism, if your kid has autism, just talk to other moms that kids have autism. But autism is a spectrum. It's not like, for one, I'm not even like no friendly type person like that. I'm really reserved. Like, I'm very reserved. So, I don't just go out and try to look in. Oh my God. Like, blah, blah, blah. like I, I don't do that. But uh, if it was groups, like Facebook groups, I have been in those. And people really don't even talk about what their kid isn't doing or is doing or what helps. They just talk about their kid accomplishments. So, it's still kind of don't help for me. But. It's a spectrum, and I say that because Julian has autism, right? I came across a person channel that little girl has autism, and she's 13. The little girl is still functioning on a three-year-old, like, wave. Julian, so she's, like, real low-functioning. Julian isn't low-functioning. Well, he's middle. He's in the middle, and I'm trying to get him to the high. So he's, he's delayed on some spots, but he's real delayed on some spots, and some spots it's like... You, you you actually ex exceeded that uh, on that test or whatever. So, yeah. But AVA will come out and talk to the family. They will tell us how to, like, a, AV, a person, the AVA program is a person that's trained, that's hired, that's done this for years. They could tell us, you know, kids with autism, this helps. This is normal for kids with autism. Try this. And, you know, they can kind of help the family because, like I have always said, this is my first child with autism. I have no idea how this is supposed to work or go or how easy it's supposed to be or how hard it is, the programs and stuff like that. Also, I'm going to go ahead and say out here, Julian, because I'm, I'm trying to just cover all this in the autism like spectrum like video. So, also, Julian have an autism. A lot of people don't know, but there are service dogs for kids with autism. And I was like... A service dog like what, what really but no it's like a service dog like julian when i get him out the car like if i could get the service dog out if i get the service dog out first and julian love dogs anyway but if i get the service dog out first i the service dog i really don't know to sit i could sit here and like tie like a belt little thing to julian so julian can like pet the dog and stay with the dog and stay with the family because the dog is not gonna leave the family and when julian just runs away like the dog can help me find find him he has not like ran away where i haven't found him or noticed that he was gone but i will say that he ran out the house like julian twisted the knob opened up the door and was on his way like down the steps like almost just free so yeah and like yeah i was brushing my teeth and jay went to warm up the car and with in that second while i'm brushing my teeth or whatever he just was sitting here watching cartoons like Literally, Jay went downstairs to warm the car. He was kind of mad about it, but he, you know, he started, he won. So, I don't know, I'm brushing my teeth, but something just told me, like, to say, Juju, Juju, man, Juju, man, like, I didn't hear nothing. And Juju also will hide. That's another thing that kids with autism do, or my son with autism. He likes to hide up under stuff. He likes to be intense. Like, he feels safe when he's under something. Julian will sleep under his bed versus in his bed. And... 
had I had other kids that more than likely will come home or come visit or any of that, like, I wouldn't even say this, but I was going to get him a slide bed. That way he could have a bed at the top and I could make him like a little pallet and stuff like that at the bottom. That way that would have been his own like little tent. Like that's what I was going to do. But yeah, cause, just because I want him to be comfortable. I want him to feel at home when he's at home. I don't know. I just want him to enjoy his childhood. So I wanted to make it as special or as close as possible for him. Um... What else was I gonna say? Also, the service dog don't just help you like find your kid or keep up with your kid. The dog is actually kind of like an emotional support animal for kids with autism. It's been shown, or it's been shown, and I have seen people testify like, dude, my child has came more alive. And also, like kids that have service dogs at schools, those service dogs actually, you know, do a service. They, um, uh, make the kids talk to other kids, communicate with other kids, and I just be so close. Then I'm real close then myself, so I don't see nothing wrong with it. But I mean some people don't like folks to squire, but oh well. So what else is I gonna say? I think that's all I was gonna say about uh autism. Also kids with autism sometimes have like a sleep disorder. Julian definitely has a sleep disorder. Um loves water, will go wandering, will go off with a stranger um it's just a it's, a it's a lot and i can't think of all of them right here on this video that's kind of why i'll be doing my videos and i'll be having my husband on my videos because he's a part of the family for one and for two he helps me remember stuff that should be like right down the front of my head and they'd be like dude i should say it in the video and the video be over but yeah you guys um I don't want this to be too long but i just kind of want to touch on some things with autism some of the services service animals and things like that uh yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video. Be blessed. Peace.